All right, good morning. good morning. Let's start with a really stupid dad, dad joke. SB, you be quiet. How many tickles does it take to make an octopus laugh? Ten tentacles. <laughs> okay, uh, another real cute funny is I was working on this presentation and uh, my wife, uh, Elizabeth or Liz, and I both work from home. So I go, I'm working on this presentation and First thing in the morning, I'm an I'm a early morning person. And I thought, well, you know, I look at my watch. It's about time to go take a shower and shave and then go go to work, go to the other bedroom. So I walk in there, I'm talking to her, and she looks at me, she says, you plan on going to work today? I'm like, yeah, I'm about to go take a shower and shave. She says, Hud, you're 15 minutes late. <laughs> <laughs> so I called my boss and told her, or uh, texted my boss, hey, I'm running late, no excuses, just I'm running late, <laughs> I'll make it up. All righty. I've given you, we're going to go through um, land nav, I'm calling it land nav, uh, land nav and map reading today. It's a going to be probably a two uh, session block here. I've given you a packet. In the packet, you have pay speeds, you have a base plate compass, you have a protractor, childish joke. I'm getting out of the way. Gentlemen, mine is bigger than yours. <laughs> and you also have a copy of my presentation and a copy of uh, maptools.com's uh, how to plot or how to, uh, yeah, how to plot a uh, location on a map. At the end of this course, you may have the paper. I need the pay speeds, the uh, compass, and the protractor back so we can have it for the following session and for the practical, so for people who don't have it. All right. Uh, now, why am I here? Introduction to HUD. Y'all probably heard this a million times before. I was airborne infantry in the Army. I was uh, on a long-range surveillance team. So what they did is they dumped us off anywhere between 150 and 300 miles behind enemy lines. We had no idea what the terrain looked like other than pictures and maps. Most of the time, it was a map recon. We looked at a map and figured out where, where we were going. Okay. A lot of this stuff may be repetitive to you. That's fine. You can never go over this stuff enough. Per the U.S. Army, land nav and map reading are perishable skills. I disagree. It's perishable to a point, but it's just like riding a bicycle. Once you get back in there, you'll figure it out again. All right? Uh, why are we going to... First, let's go over the different types of compasses. All right? We have a base place compass. Okay, this is also called an orienteering compass. Is this the best, the, the best compass? No, not in my opinion. Will it work? Yes. Would I bet my life on this? With my skills, absolutely. As a new person, in a, under a limited situation, yes. If I'm in a state park or something like that. If I'm going out into the national woodlands, absolutely not. Okay. Is it a bad compass? No, not at all. I just don't like it. It's my... You know, it's okay. I'll use it. Okay. Here's my preference of a base plate compass. Okay. And this is a Sunto MG. I don't have my glasses on. Uh, what is that, baby? MC2 or MC5? Down there by you there. All right. The MC2. All right. You notice I have my pay speeds. And this other little thing is a declination key. We'll get into that later on. This just has all kinds of features that I like. All right, if I'm going out in the woods, as I did last weekend when I went to Guadalupe River State Park to scout the land nav course, I took this with me, okay? What am I missing? Okay, protractor. Those of you who know me, this is my little packet I carry everywhere. I had them. What else am I missing? Map. Maps. Had them. What else am I missing? Important. Signaling. Okay. We recently had a lot of people get lost. Search and rescue try, is trying to find them. Do you think you're going to be able to yell when you're dehydrated? 
Do you think they can hear this? Okay. You will get part of your packet for your practical. You will get a brand new Fox 40 whistle. It's a Fox 40. This is what the football referees use. It's very shrill, as you heard. Okay. No big deal. You handle it. It's probably Grandma. All righty. Let me put on my glasses. All right. Why are we going to use a compass? All right, compass. We're looking at different types. Button compass. Can you put it on your watch, put it on the back of your cap, pin it to your shirt, what have you. You can put it on your whistle. All right. Put it in your pocket, put it on your keychain. You know, there are walking sticks that have button compasses on them. Is this the best? No. Will it work? Gives you the general direction. That's all you really need, okay? Wrist compass. When I was in the Army, I had my G-Shock on my left wrist. I had one of these on my right wrist. Would I land now by it? Yes, I have. Is it as accurate as a... Kaminga, the military compass. No, it's not. But based on the skills that you have, you can use different tools. This was a tool, okay? Speaking of the Kaminga, also called, if I can keep it untangled here, also called a lens addict, okay? I do not recommend this for beginners. The U.S. military, to the best of my knowledge, is the only one who still uses a Kaminga, okay? The rest of the world has actually gone to the MC2, okay? This is more in lines with uh, artillery than it is for actual land now, okay? Is it a good compass? you damn right it is. But is it the best for a beginner? No. Well, why does the military use it then, HUD? Because they've got, what is it, 12 weeks now to train soldiers, and they can spend a week teaching them how to use it, okay? Anyone can learn how to use that. Remember, they put, inf they put those in the hands of, of uh, infantrymen and artillery, okay? So, all right, let's get, back into, let's get back to the presentation now. I think I've gone down my rabbit holes. Why do we want to use a compass, all right? Naturally, we have lateral drift. It's natural, okay? If you are right-handed, I will bet $100 that you drift to your right. If you are left-handed, you drift to your left. That is natural, okay? Why do you have a compass? To make sure we go straight, okay? It's all a compass is for, to make sure you go in a straight line, okay? How do you combat that lateral drift? A, you use a compass. B, if you're carrying the compass and actually looking at it and navigating that way, navigate 100 meters with it, in your right hand, the next hundred, switch over and navigate with your left hand. That will naturally pull you. Think about when you're driving. When you're looking to your right, which way does your car go? We go right. When you're looking to your left, we go left. Think about it. Where do people normally keep their cell phones when they're driving? On the right. What's the worst? What are they always doing? Swerving to the right lane, right? It's natural. Okay? Compass types. We've already gone over that. All right. Ad additionally, for the lens attic, it uses mills. Again, that's using uh, artillery. And there are 6,283 mills in a circle. I don't need to be that damn exact. 360 is confusing enough for me. All right. Let's go over the different parts of the uh, ruler or of the uh, compass. I'm on page two of your presentation. Okay, we're going to look at the direction arrow. Oh, get one out of here. All right, no, I got it, baby. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Not like I don't have more in here. Your direction arrow, it's the arrow at the very top here. That's common sense, it tells you which way you are going or which way you want to go. All right, we'll go to the magnifier. Kind of important, okay? Especially those of us who wear these things that are on top of my head that are supposed to be on my face. Because when you're trying to look at these little bitty tick marks on your protractor, you might need to use that because they get mighty small, okay? One over 24,000 scale. When we're talking about maps, you have various scales, all right? Now, 
we, we are Americans, so we're used to using yards, inches, feet. We don't do that in land nav and map, map reading. It's meters, okay? Meters, kilometers, that's all, that's what it boils down to, okay? If you're talking to someone who knows what they're doing, they're liable to say something is 1K away or one click. Okay, one click is one kilometer, 1,000 meters, all right? Roughly uh, 0.612 miles, so just over a half a mile, all right? Um, scale, when you see the scale of map, and we'll get into scale deeper when we get into map reading, uh, a scale, scale of map, so one inch on the map, and we'll use inches here, in this case, we're going uh, 24,000 equals 24,000 inches on the face of the earth. Okay, you want to map, match your scale to your protractor, your protractor to your scale, however you want to say it. All right, we've got the orienteering lines. When you have your compass laid on a map, that's how you make sure that your uh, compass is straight. Your map has various straight lines on it, line them up. Okay. Page three, we got the azimuth or bearing. That's your black ring, okay? That is, and I'll get into the exact definition of an azimuth and bearing shortly. That's the direction you're going to go, okay? It does move so that you can adjust it. You got your magnetic needle. Everyone knows what the, ma what the magnetic needle's for. Red points north, okay? All righty. There are some other things on there. They're all basically the same, but are, uh, they're very basic. You can see them in your notes. I'm not going to go over those. We're going to go over a pace now, all right? A pace is not a step, okay? A lot of people think, well, a pace is a step. One, two, no, okay? A step is a half of a pace. Now, when you're determining your pace, consistency is the key. I'll tell you that right now, okay? I am a lefty. I was in the army. I start stepping with my left foot. That's natural to me, and that's what I was taught. Okay? So when I pace, I start, I always count on my left foot. People will tell you, HUD, you're wrong. No, I'm not, because I'm consistent. I always count on my left foot. What you're supposed to do is count on your second foot. One. Okay, but it doesn't matter because I'm consistent with it. Okay. Um, again, am I wrong? Yes, to a certain degree. But no, overall, no, I'm not. Okay, because I am consistent. When you're counting your pace and your pace count, it's per 100 meters. All right. Before uh, the library opened, I went out and you can see the color of red. I have a pace course set out up front. Okay. It starts just probably right about here by the door. You go up, you go around the bend. I have the chalk going around the bend, and you go up probably about another 25 meters, 25 yards, and there's another line. That's the end of 100. You're going to count on the same foot. One, two, three. All right, you can go up to the 100, and then you turn back around, come back, do it again, divide that number in two, and that's your pace. That's your pace count, all right? My pace count, I say, is 65. It fluctuates between 63 and 67, depending upon the terrain, depending upon the gear that I have. So I just say it's 65. Properly, you should take your pace in every kind of terrain that you think you're going to be in. You should take your pace, okay? I never did, and I've never been off by more than probably about, no more than probably about 10 meters in a, in a kilometer, all right? Again, it's practice. Could I do that now? No. Once I'm practicing, yeah, I can get it done again, all right? Um, it's always good to verify every chance, every chance you get to verify, all right? This 200 meter course, it works. Is it the best? No. Go up to a high school track. That's 400 meters. Walk the whole thing around, count your pace, and, and divide by four, all right? I want to say Elizabeth Pace is 67, or is it 69? She's in a high 60, okay? So if we can't remember if it's 67 or 69, her pace count's 68, okay? Uh, let's see. All right. That's what I have to say about pace count. Know your pace count because that tells you how far you've gone and where you're going, all right? Types of land nav. This comes from U.S. Army 
TC3-25.23, all right? And I'm going to read some of this stuff because it's quotes. Terrain association is the ability to identify terrain features on the ground. That's one form. We'll go over that here shortly. Point navigation or dead reckoning is done by starting from a known point and strictly following a predetermined azimuth and distance. I'll get into azimuth and distance here in a minute. Matter of fact, here it is. Definition, an azimuth is a bearing on a compass, okay? You will hear me say various terms. What's your azimuth? What's your bearing? What, where are you going based on a compass? Okay, you also hear me say, shoot your azimuth. That doesn't mean you get your trusty little BB gun off of your hip and shoot the compass, okay? It means you're going to lay your, uh, lay your bearing with these compasses the way that I would do it is lock in your wrist. You've got your direction arrow. You're gonna point, I'm looking at the doorknob back there on the door behind you. Okay, I'm way off, I'm way off, I'm way off. Okay, I'm there, okay? You can do it like this, but now you're gonna play hell seeing the bezel ring so you don't know what direction and how to adjust. Do it down here, lock your consistency, guys. Consistency. With this one, I'm gonna line it up and make sure I can see my plate and I'm going to line it up and I have two notches that I can aim with, okay? That's why I'm going to do it. With the Kaminga, or lens attic, whatever you choose to call it. Get everything all set up here. You can see you got to set it up. And now I'm going to shoot, okay? It's a lot like yours, Gary. Okay? A lot like yours. All right? Uh, a bearing is the angle between the direction uh, to north and the direction to the target, okay? Got a hold of myself and started on how to shoot an azimuth. Once you have everything laid in here, okay, you will notice that there is an arrow on this compass. You're going to put Fred in the shed or the dog in the house, however you choose to say it, okay? Once you get that done, you're gonna twist your bezel ring until the arrow is in the red arrow is in the black arrow outline. Okay. Now that tells me I am looking at roughly a 126 degree bearing. Okay. My bearing is 126 degrees. Okay. So if I'm Jim over here and I'm talking to Charlotte and I did not write that down. Oh crap. What was my bearing? Okay, do we just need to put Fred back in a shed? And looky there, um, back where I need to be, okay? You will also use that just, uh, just, to, just to keep track. And if you're going to, uh, if you're going to de dead reckon, you gotta keep the dog in the house. If I go this way, the dog's out of the house. I gotta keep the dog in the house, the arrow in the, uh, the red arrow in the black arrow outline, okay? Different compasses respond a little bit differently. Uh, with this one, it's a red arrow, and it truly looks like a doghouse. You want to pass that around? Okay. And uh, so you put Fred in the shed, and you look if uh, the numer numerical bearing is uh, needed. You read it. All right. A trick if you are if you are dead reckoning, and if you have two people, have one person navigate, one person count pace. Okay. Use a buddy system, all right? Because being all by yourself and trying to figure out where you're going and keeping your pace count, what happens if someone speaks to you, Jerry, in the middle of a pace count? That's never happened to you, has it? <laughs> yeah, well, people don't, people don't come up and drive while you're trying to get your pace count. So it's easier that way. Even in the military, you're gonna have your point man who is navigating your second man is keeping pace count, okay? Now, how do we keep pace count with the ranger beads? I just gave away my ranger beads. All right, ranger beads. These are homemade. I made them. Uh, we made some like these at the last, last camp out. Make sure your beads are up top. This is a five kilometer pace speed set, okay? So I'm walking and I hit my 65. I'm going to take one of the bottom beads and I'm going to drop it down. That is one. Okay. 
And I'm going to continue doing that. Okay, I'm now at 800 meters, and I hit my 65 again. I'm at 900 meters, okay? Again, 65. Now, because we've run out of the little ones, we're going to drop, or the big ones, we're going to drop one of the little ones and run the big ones back up, okay? That represents, I can look at that and tell you that I'm sitting at one kilometer, okay? You can move these however you want to. You see, I'm not even looking at them. I'm sitting at three kilometers and five, so I'm sitting at 3,500 meters. Okay? That's how far I've walked. Each of the lower beads is 100 meters. Each of the upper beads is 1,000 meters. Then you move up to the top. Okay? Once you've got all those at the bottom, and then you hit your pace count again, you're going to take the, uh, one of the little ones from up top, you're going to drop it, and you're going to run these back up, and you're going to start back over with the, th with the 100, 100, 100, 100. Once you finish those, you're going to drop the next one and run them back up, et cetera. That's why this is 5,000 meters, okay? If I wanted to put more beads on top and confuse myself, I could, okay? But this is what, it, people call these pace beads, or they're also called ranger beads, because the airborne reindeer, I mean, airborne rangers wear these, okay? Um, and that's just where they came up with them, okay? When I was in the Army, I wore them on my uh, LBE, that shows my age, my load-bearing equipment, I carried them on my left shoulder, okay? Uh, you can see on my compass, I have them on my compass intentionally, I made a longer set just for that compass, uh, and that's just where I keep them, okay? Something else you can do when, you're de when you are dead reckoning is you can leapfrog, okay? So if I need to go 5,000 meters, okay? And, but I can't see my spot, but I've plotted it on the map, so I know my azimuth, and say I've got to go that 126 degrees, okay? But I can only see something that, and we're going to use the doorknob again, I can see the doorknob clearly, okay? I don't want to have to hold my compass and make sure I'm on that bearing when I can see the doorknob. I'm going to walk straight to that doorknob. Once I get to the doorknob, I'm going to get on the other side of the door, and I'm going to shoot my 126 again. I'm going to pick something there. You're going to leap from, okay? Now, here comes the problem. We are, we are dead, we're dead reckoning, and we're on page six. We're dead reckoning, and we come to an obstacle. Oh, shoot. Okay, I'm on my 126. And someone pick a number between 1 and 65. SB, there you go, 30. All right. 30. Uh, hmm, how am I going to do this? It's called boxing. You're going to go 45 deg or 90 degrees. You pick which way, right or left. Okay, you're going to write down your 30 because that's where you were on your, on your original. Okay, you're going to pick it, 90. I don't care which one it is. 126 plus 90 is uh, one, uh, 216, right? Because we are less than 180 degrees, we're going to add that 90, okay? So I'm going to go, I said this way, didn't I? All right, so I'm going to turn 90 degrees, all right? Now I'm going to start a brand new pace count. One, two, three, convenient, all right? So I know I'm going to write that three down. Now, I'll get back in frame, I'll get back in frame. All right, so I'm back over there at the corner. So now I'm facing this way, all right, because I just got to the ed edge of the table. So now I'm going to turn 90 degrees, and I'm going to continue on my original pace count until I get to the end of the tables, all right? I can't do it because I have to stay in frame, but let's say it's 10, it's 10 paces. It's not, but let's just say it is. So now I'm at 40 on my original. I'm going to scratch the 30, put down a 40, so I know what my original is. I wrote down, what was my number? Three. So now I'm going to turn opposite the, I'm going to turn 180 to the way I was, or 90 degrees opposite of, of what I originally turned, okay? So now I'm facing back this way, and I'm going to go my three. One, two, three. Turn back on the original azimuth and continue on my pace count. That's called a box. It's for any obstacle. It can be a danger zone. Okay, if we're talking in a tactical or tactical situation, it can be a danger zone. It can be something you don't want to mess with. Let's say we're out at Guadalupe uh, River State Park, 
oh crap, there's a bunch of poison oak, po poison ivy. How many of y'all are, are afraid of poison oak, po poison ivy? I'm not. I'm one of those lucky people. I am not allergic to it. I can crawl in it all day long. Been there, done that. Okay? So, you don't want to go through that. Box around. Okay? What if you're out in rural Texas and you're on your, you're on your, you're on your dead, dead reckoning and you come across a, a stock tank? Got to go around. You're not going to be walking on water. Your name is not Jesus Christ. Okay? So, it has all kinds of necessities. All right? It's much easier to say than it was to type. It took a whole page to type, or a whole page for me because I have everything blown up. All right? Trend association is what most of us do most of the time. And I want to preface this, and I forgot to preface it at the beginning. Every one of you in this room have land navigation skills. Okay? You can look at me and say, HUD, no, you're crazy as hell. No, I'm not. How did you get from your car into here? You navigated terrain. How did you get from your house to here in your car? You, you navigated. You land navigation. I'm just telling you tips and tricks and giving you the technical terms, okay? Train association, that's what most of us do, okay? That's what I do, all right? If I have to lay in a uh, dead reckoning, I will. I much prefer not to. Right? Train association, look, there's a hill over there. And look, there's a even bigger hill over here, and i got to get to the clock. Okay, well, if I keep the little hill on my left and I keep the big hill on my right, because I know that they're in between there looking to map. Oh, look at this. Oh, wait, wait. The big hill's not on my right anymore. There's a big hill. Put it back on your right. Okay, that's the way we do it. Okay, think about when you're driving. You're going to X location that's on Main Street. Okay. What happens if you, it's at Main and 1st Street, okay? What happens if you get to Main and 2nd Street? What's happened? You've overshot it. You've looked around. Hey, this is 2nd Street, not 1st Street. What do you do? Turn back around. You've terrain associated, okay? Okay, we do it all the time. Yeah. Okay, I've gone through that one. This is the one, general azimuth, where I'm, pay, oh, uh, tricks for train association. Use uh, chan, uh, chair rails and backstops. Oh, my God, what, what did you say? Chair rail. What does a chair, what do you, the hands on your chair do? They keep you in the chair, right? They keep you in, keep you facing the direction. What does a backstop do in baseball? Keeps the ball from going too far, right? Do the same thing. Say we're going to X location, because X always mark, marks a spot, especially on a pirate map, right? <laughs> so we're going to X, okay? And we, we look at the, at the map, okay? The dock. Uh, we look at the map and we decide that, okay, there's a creek that runs on the left of it, there's a pipeline that runs on the right, and about 200 meters behind, behind our point is a uh, hard top road, a paved, a paved road. Okay, if I am going this way and I get to the creek, what happens? I've drifted too far left. Okay, so I know don't cross that creek. So I correct for my left lateral drift, and remember this is my left, I know it's your right, but my left. And I get to the pipeline. Oh crap, I've drifted too far right. So I got myself in. So. Because I've been zigzagging, I miss my point, and I come to the blacktop road. I'm not crossing that road because that's my backstop. I've got to figure out where exactly on this road I am, shoot another azimuth, and that time I'm probably going to dead reckon for the most part. Okay? So, just little tips and tricks. We do that all the time. If you're going to someone's house... You know, you're going to follow whatever the road is. If you get, if you are road to the left one, you're going, you know, hey, I need to get back on road to the right. Road to the right, need to get back, you know, same thing. Back stop. If you go, if you get to this, you've gone, you've gone too far. Okay. Give you a real world situation. Elizabeth and I were going to Texas A&M this spring for the uh, lacrosse tournament. Okay. Have any of you seen the nightmare that is I-10 east of town? Okay, we get there, and I am very analog, because Jerry gives me a hard time. I actually have a 
folded Texas map in the glove box of every vehicle, as should you, okay? I am a coordinated, which means I know how to fold them back up, okay? <laughs> I, got, I told Liz, get the map out and give me a parallel road. Bless her heart, doesn't know how to read a map. Barely knows up from down, I mean north from south, okay? I love her to pieces. She didn't know what was going on, so I said, and so I pulled over, finally said, all right, let me have the map. We got on, we went south of 10 for about a mile, and then we found a road, and I looked at it on the map. I said, when we get to this road, we're going to turn back east, and we're going to box this crap, okay? And we boxed it for about 10 miles. Then I turned back north and hit I-10, boogied east, okay? So this has real-world application. It's not just land nav getting out and using my feet, okay? Um, this is prepper net, so paper maps, which is, what I'm going, which is what I'm teaching, might be a good idea because if something happens and the lights go out, well, I got a GPS on my phone. Yeah, well, that battery's dead, now what? Yeah, well, I got a real GPS. Yeah, those batteries are dead, now what? Well, I got a solar system. Those batteries are only going to be charged for so long. And what happens if, oh, I don't know, uh, the sun has a hell of a storm like we did a week ago today, and it takes out our satellites. Your GPS is done. Okay? Did you look at the dots? That's, that's the course, the dots. Okay. Um, so know how to use a map. Am I saying don't use a, uh, a GPS? No, not at all. Okay? Do I know how to use a GPS? No. Not really. Do I need to learn how to use a GPS? Yes, absolutely. The last GPS I had, those of you that were in the military eons ago, was a plugger. It was not accurate for anything. It was the military with the military encryption, so it should have been dead on. I had a civilian, uh, good God, it's the uh, Magellan XL. We're going back eons and ago. That was more accurate than our plugger, and I used it. And we only used it just to verify what we already knew. Okay. All right, uh, general azimuth, all right, and this goes along the lines of dead wreck or uh, terrain association, but it's not really, okay, they're kind of cousins, is I'm going to generally follow that 126 degree azimuth, okay? If I come over here a little bit, well, I'm still generally following that 126. If I come over here a little bit, I'm generally following it. That's where you need to have your checkpoints. Look at your map. What's a checkpoint? Just like it is in a car, okay? It's someplace that when you get there, you know where you are, and you take a couple of seconds and make sure everything is still squared away. Just like a checkpoint in a car. What's only a checkpoint in a car is called a gas station. That's where you're supposed to look at your tires, make sure your tire's okay, check your oil, fill it up, and none of us do that. We just put the nozzle in and mash on and go and get whatever beverage we want, okay? But in land nav, use your checkpoints, okay? Real world situation again. I'd earned my sergeant stripes. I was teaching a bunch of guys fresh out of basic training. We had uh, some new team members. And we were doing a land nav course. It was a nightmare, okay? We all have that nightmare employee. Doesn't matter if you're in the military or in the civilian world. That's just a pain in the butt. Doesn't do what he's supposed to do and everything else, okay? And we also have that dream employee. You tell him once and you never have to speak to him again. I had, then I had to just regular plain Joe with me, but I had let my stud go first because I knew it was going to be one and done, all right? He was done within about 300 meters. He's doing what he's supposed to do, everything else. Then I had my knucklehead, all right? Every 100 meters, he wanted to stop and do a map check. Every 100 meters, and we had a 20K movement that night. This isn't daytime. This is nighttime, Okay. We had to go 20K in one night, and we had, it was a recognition course, so we had to identify enemy uh, vehicles and everything else, okay? And it was a race. They were racing against the other uh, 17, well, I guess it would be the other 35 teams, they split us in half, the other 35 teams, okay? And in the military, it, it, military, there ain't no participation trophies. You either win or you lost, okay? So... Sorry for another time, we cheated because I already had, we, I already had the answer, so we won, but that's for another story. Get him going every 100 meters, he wants to stop and do a map check. I got to look at that map. Well, we had a checkpoint of a road that's 200 meters in front of us. Have we got to that road yet? 
Well, no. Well, then what do you want to do with map check for? Well, I got to check, make sure I know where I am. Come on, guys. Use your checkpoints, okay? They're there for a reason, okay? Um, and again, follow your, follow your general azimuth. This road goes generally, especially in San Antonio, this isn't going to apply because all the cow trails that we call roads now, but this road goes generally north. Let's take Judson. It goes generally uh, east-west, generally, okay? So if I want to go east, I go east. If I want to go west, I go west. But is it exactly 90 degrees? No. Is it exactly 180 or uh, 270 degrees? No. But it's generally, I'm going generally west. And that's the situation where uh, Liz and I were going to uh, Texas A&M. I needed to go south to get away from all this traffic, and I need to go generally east. Okay, was I going exactly 90 degrees? No, I don't know what I was. I didn't have my compass. I was in a car. I'm doing it by road map. Okay. All righty. I need a class participation here. Everybody raise your non-dominant hand. Make a fist. Congratulations. You now know all five major tra train features. Class is dismissed. Okay, I want to start with a word for the day. It's actually a word, the words for the next two class sessions. Okay, I want y'all to, to remember this buried in your brain. Right and up. Say it again. Say it after me. Right and up. Right. Up. Right and up. Right and up. Okay? Right and up. That's the word of the day. It'll be the word, definitely be the word of next week. All right, let's get back to our fist. Okay? How many of you like Hidden Valley Ranch salad dressing? Okay. I just told you the answer right there. Name the five major train features. Hidden, hills, valley. Oh, valleys. Ranch, ridge. Salad uh, is a saddle. Dressing, depression. Or you can do depression here. Hidden Valley Ranch salad dressing. Those are the five majors. Now, let's, let's go over them a little bit slower. All right? With our fist, hill, that's your knuckles. Each knuckle is a hilltop, okay? Valley, a couple of ways you can do a valley. I do a valley right here. This can also be a draw, which is a minor. We'll get to those. Some people do a valley on the underside of their fist. It's the same thing. All right, ranch, ridge. A ridge is a group of hilltops. So your knuckles all the way across is a ridge or a ridge line, all right? Hidden Valley Ranch salad. Sal a saddle. That is the low area between two hilltops. Looks like a saddle. Looks like where you put a horse when you put a saddle on a horse. Okay. Dressing is a depression. Turn your hand sideways. Obviously, it goes down. Okay. You can do a cup on your hand. That's obviously a depression as well. All right. That's your mnemonic. If you can remember that, you're good. All right. We are on page nine. All right. Contour lines. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, seven for y'all? All right, it's, it's nine for me, I'm sorry. All right, Esperanza, my niece in the back corner, laughed at me last night when she was going over my stuff. Because the best way I can describe contour lines is how many of us have seen or played the game Minecraft? Yeah, raise your hand high, Espy. All right, Minecraft, when you see, and there are pictures in the presentation when we get there. Minecraft has a series of steps for the hills and going up and down. Think of those as your contour line. A contour line represents an, an elevation change. That's all it is, all right? Those are the brown lines. I'm gonna hold this up. I'm not gonna pass this around because this has the answers for the practical exam, okay? But all these little red lines and stuff are brown, brown lines. Those are your contour lines, okay? That tells you the elevation above sea level. In America, here we go, America, thank you, Jimmy Carter, we are in feet. The rest of the world is in meters, okay? Again, thank you, Jimmy Carter. Uh, you have, there are three types of contour lines. I've never seen one. So we're going to say there are two. I will tell you about the third, all right? You've got your index. That's your dark line, okay? The index, I-N-D-E-X, okay? It's on page, uh, what page is it, Charlie? Page seven? seven? 
It's on page 7 for you. That's your thick line. It has a number in there, normally uh, in the line. That tells you the elevation. Again, if it's a U.S. map, it is, actually, it fits in the U.S. Uh, if it's a U.S. territory, state or territory, it's going to be in feet. Okay? If you get outside of the U.S., it goes to meters. Okay? Which is roughly three feet. Okay? It's the heavier line. I told you it's a bold, and it's the one with the number. The next one is your intermediary. It is not as bold, and it tells you, and when you look at the, um, I'm blanking out, the bottom of the map, the legend in the map, it will tell you what the, uh, what the contour interval is. It's normally 10 meters. Normally, it can be more, it can be less, depending upon the map. Yeah, it can be 10 feet, 10 meters. In America, it's in feet. I speak meters because most of my land nav was overseas. I've done very little land nav here in, here in the States, so forgive me. It is, but you need to... Yes, it's, huge. it's, a, it's a huge difference, okay? Um, there are normally four uh, intermediates in between a or two indexes. Because you're going to go 10, 20, 30. Okay, you got 400, 410, 420, 430, 440, 450, 500, etc. All the way up. Okay? Supplemental are the dotted lines. Okay? Again, I have never seen a supplemental. Never. Or let me rephrase that. I do not recall seeing a supplemental. Have you ever seen a supplemental? No. Okay, I do not recall seeing them. Picture time. This is what Minecraft looks like. Okay, you have pictures of it in your presentation as well. All those little blocks are different uh, elevations, and those are your contour lines. Did I explain that correctly, Esther? We have an, another one with a depression in it. Okay, you can see the depression where the water is. All right. Now let's get into some terrain features. On our fist, we have, what was the H? Hidden Valley Ranch, what's the H? Hills. 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 Okay. A hill on a map is represent, represented by a closed circle. That's the very top. Okay. This hill, I cannot tell how high it is. You have it on page nine of your handout. That is a hill, okay? We all know what a hilltop looks like with the eye. That's what it looks like on a map. It's a closed circle, all right? If you are standing on a hilltop or on a hill, however you choose to say it, the, gro the ground slopes down, period. If it slopes up and if you think you're on a hilltop, it slopes up, you ain't on a hilltop, okay? It has to slope down. Valley, it may or may not contain a stream. You've traveled all over Texas, haven't you? You ever been in the, Braz in the, in the Brazos Valley between Fort Worth and Abilene? You ever heard of Ranger Hill? Yep. Ranger Hill is the west side of the Brazos River Valley. The Brazos River back by Weatherford, and it's in Ranger. That's about an hour away. That's how wide that valley is, okay? So it may or may not have a stream in it. Is there a waterway in the Brazos River Valley? Absolutely, it's the Brazos River. But does it take up the entire valley? No. Okay. So, the main thing you can tell about a valley is when you're looking at the contour lines, it makes a U. Okay? It looks like a U. All right? And, what does it say? Oh, it, it, the... If the contour lines are pointed in a direction, that is the way of the stream. This points to the stream, okay? So, that is your valley. Then we go to R. That's Hidden Valley Ranch. That's a ridge line. Or a ridge. It's a line of concentric hills. Okay? And again, y'all all have these in your handout. I'm just holding these up to show you, okay? Again, do your fist. Take your first three knuckles. That's a ridge. You can do all four or however you want to do it, as long as they're concentric. Okay? Saddle is a, a dip or low point along the crest of a ridge. 
Okay, we got these and again. Do your knuckle right there. All right, we should see these all over the place around the around, around here living in the in the hill country. If you have a ridge line, then you will have multiple saddles. Okay, if you only have if you have a ridge line of only two, which is a ridge line, right? There's only one saddle. So for every hilltop in a ridge, there should be a saddle. Now, if it's visible or not, is something else entirely different in Texas because of all the cedar trees, or uh, yeah, the cedar trees and the oak trees. You're probably not going to see it. All right? And that's what makes land nav so difficult here in the San Antonio area is the trees hide all your train features. I mean, you see trees, okay? All righty, depression. When you have a depression, it's going to be... A circle and you're going to have ticks pointing towards the middle little tick marks okay when you see a depression think of a pond a stock tank a natural body of water well not only there's only one natural uh, lake in Texas the rest are all man-made okay and that would be Calaveras is the only natural lake okay It depends. Um, we're not to that point yet, but it could show up. It would be a broken blue line once we get to the actual map reading and explaining the uh, the legend. It would be a blue line. It could be. I mean, let's take a look at, let's use the Guadalupe River here. Are there any depressions around the Guadalupe? Yeah. You know, there are more cliffs, but they can be a depression as well. Okay. Now we're going to get into some of the minor features. Okay. They're still important to know, but they are minor features. All right. You have a draw. Think of a draw as a small valley. Okay. What letter did I say a valley represents on a map? Say again. No. Close. One before there. A U. A U is a valley. A V represents a draw. Okay? The ground slopes uh, towards the draw on each side. And again, it's got a V. The major difference between a valley and a draw comes down to a military term of area of maneuver. Can you maneuver in, in that area? Okay. A draw is going to be a, you can maneuver with probably a man-sized element or a small, at least a squad, probably maybe a platoon-sized element you can maneuver. Okay. A valley, you're going to have armor and everybody else maneuvering in there. Okay. I did not want to get into that because of getting into the military type stuff. Okay. All right, a spur. Okay, a spur is the side of the hill that's still rather elevated as it comes down. Okay, normally jutting out from the hill. Okay, you see them in paintings all the time, especially if you watch uh, Bob Ross. He's always doing the hills that are interconnecting, and then you see the one hill that kind of goes down the side, that would be the spur of that hill. It juts out a little bit, okay? Spur is more upward, is you're looking at a hill, okay? And let's go, let's go to Moab, picture Moab, okay? You have this, uh, this rock hill, okay? But then there's this one part that, that just, that's just wide enough for the Jeeps to normally go up, that would be your spur. It, but, you know, but if the Jeep goes a little bit too far right, it's going to fall down the hill, it goes too far left, it rolls down the hill, that's your spur. Ex there, yes, absolutely, yes. A cliff. I think we all know what a cliff is, but it's a vertical drop. If you're looking at contour lines, the closer they are, the steeper it is. Okay. Yeah, you got whatever it is, you take a look. And this is the Guadalupe River, all right? 
near where our campsite is going to be, you see this big, big old brown spot? That's one hell of a cliff. Wouldn't want to uh, step off of that. Okay? These are supplementals. Okay? And again, I think I've seen them on a training map at, at, at Fort Benning, but I don't think I've ever seen them in a real world map. That would be a cut and a fill. Okay? Think of a, uh, think of a railroad track. Okay? Or think of a highway here or roads here in the hill country. When we cut through a mountain or a hill, there's a cut. Well, if we're going to the low spot, they want to keep the road level, they have to fill it. It's indicated by tick marks. Uh, a cut will be tick marks in. A fill will be tick marks out. Again, I do not ever recall seeing those on a map except in training. You? Uh, I, East, they do? Oh, yeah, they've got all... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. And that is where we are for today. Next week, we will go over map reading. We will briefly refresh this. Next month is what I meant. I apologize. On the 9th, how's that? Yeah, okay. I've got the presentation. On the 9th, we're going to go over map reading, and that's where we start incorporating more of this, okay? And uh, we start talking about the different types of maps and everything. I want to thank Chris very much for the use of your three fancy uh, compasses. Yes, Gary? You get to anything paper is yours. Anything plastic is mine. That's mine. That's plastic, huh? Anything paper is yours, okay? Anything paper I can always uh, duplicate again, right? I'm not buying all this stuff over again. Uh, see, no, I just had a wife that shook her head. No, you're not. Yeah. <laughs> Terrain features, again, you get into your... Dead reckoning, and or uh, well, your dead reckoning too. That tells you it actually. Oh wow, that's a good question with a million answers. Let me slow down here. All right, terrain features let you know when we get into map reading. All right, let me read the definition of a map. A map, and this is from uh, FM three tac thirty five dot twenty six, is a graphic representation of a portion of the Earth surface drawn to scale as seen from above. So, when you start getting all these terrain, when you get all the terrain features, okay, uh, it allows you to plan no matter what you're doing. If you're just going to, all right, we're gonna go, we're gonna go out to eat. If you look at a map, I'll tell you what kind of terrain you are looking at, okay? If we lived in a truly mountainous area, and let's say the border of Colorado and New Mexico. All right, we're down in the flats and we want to go three hours to go out to eat. How do we need to dress? Do we need to put the top up on the, on the convertible? It might be 100 degrees down here. When you get up in that mountain, up on that mountaintop, it's gonna be a whole lot colder. Well, I'm only going so many miles. Well, look at the terrain features that you're going through. Let you know, let's say you're going to work, okay? And when we get to the train feature, you get you go through a draw. Well, what does a draw have? Water. And it's been raining. We finally get some rain here in San Antonio. What's going to happen to all those draws? They're going to fill up. You might not want to do that. Okay. It also lets you plan whatever. Uh, it's like when we're doing the practical. It will allow you to plan your route. It will allow you to see what is around you. It will allow you to navigate. Is that what you're looking for? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and just having the general knowledge of what these things are called. So if you're talking to someone who is a bit of a stickler for proper terms and you're talking about, well, you know, there's a group of hills over there. You mean originally? Well, no, that group of hills that are all connected. You mean a ridge line, so you're an idiot, so I'm, I'm going to tune you out. Thank you very much. You know? 
There are people out there like that who know, oh, that group of hills, okay, all right, so they're talking about a ridge line. Okay, what about the ridge line? You know, you can still pay attention, but it just makes you sound more intelligent when you're talking about uh, land nav and, 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 and map reading. Let me give you a, give you a pet peeve of mine, and then I'm going to tell you a kind of a, oh my goodness, all right? Pet peeve of mine. In map reading, there is a word that I absolutely loathe, okay? But unfortunately, it's vernacular. I try not to use it, but it's orientate. Orientate your map. You mean orient? Orientate. Um, you mean orient, right? You know, orient your map. Okay? So, there's that. And that would just, oh, that gripes me. But I hear people use it. I understand it's the vernacular. It's been accepted. Doesn't mean I have to like it, but I try not to use it, all right? When Liz and I were out scouting the uh, course Saturday, we had found uh, one of the points, and we're walking back over by the uh, amphitheater. We're not quite to the amphitheater, and we're standing there, and these two ladies come up. and, Hey, you look, you look like you, you know what's, what is going on. Can you help us? Uh, sure, I'll try. We're looking for X. Oh, great. That way's north, so, ori so orient your map. I pulled my compass out of my pocket to show which way was north, just to prove my point. Okay? And, whoa, which way is that? That's pointing towards the bend in the river. Okay, that's the terrain association right there, right? So, there's it towards over there. Now, you're going to go over there to where uh, one of the points, I was about to give away which point it is. You're going to go over there to where that point is, and I gave a general description. And you're going to turn back west, and you're going to go due west for about 150 meters. These ladies, the only thing they had, bless their hearts, Texas Parks and Wildlife Trail Map. Could you navigate using this if you know what you're doing? How many people going to a state park know what they're doing? I had this. Obviously, you can see I had this. You reckon I might have had this as well? Okay. This is a topographical map. We'll get into that. This is actually a hybrid map that Travis View, who is a member of PrepperNet as well, he's just been pulled away eight bazillion directions uh, recently. Uh, printed off, or uh, he sent it to me, and I printed it off. Okay, this is what I was using. Okay? So when you go out, make sure you have the proper tools. Oh well, I'm going to go out to the state park. I've got my bottle, my extra bottle of water. You're going to be out for two to three hours walking these trails, and you have a half a liter of water. Have you lost your mind? You're going to need a lot more water than that, all right? Well, I'm going to go out on these trails, but I don't even have a cheap button compass that happens to have a bubble in it. I'm sorry, Chris. I'm throwing you under the bus here, all right? Chris does not like this compass. I, told, I asked him why. He said, well, look at it. So, all right, so it's got a bubble in it. Not good. Once you gain the skills, that bubble means nothing to you other than a gross irritant, okay? But once you learn how to use it and get past the bubble, does it matter? No, this is a great compass for getting your general direction. Remember the term general azimuth? I'm going to generally follow that. Great tool for that. I'm going to generally follow an azimuth. Parker, are we still on, on azimuth? Close enough, Tar. Okay. Again, this was on my right wrist. Not this exact one. This is a newer one. I had one of the older ones from like 25 years ago. Go figure. Okay. There it is. You know, I used to catch hell. That thing glows in the dark at night. Well, how, how in the hell do you expect me to use it at night if I can't see it? Okay. It didn't glow that much. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Maps. You're going in next week, but we'll go there. Uh, was it U.S. Topo? Cal Topo. Cal Topo. No, I don't like them. Uh, they're okay, but they're not for a real. Uh, go to the go to the U.S. Geological Service, USGS.gov, and you can get a seven and a half minute map. I think they run fifteen bucks each. Okay, uh, a seven and a half minute map is in. 
we'll learn this next week, but I'll tell you now, I do not understand lat long. Do not. Have not tried enough. Uh, but a seven and a half minute map is seven and a half minutes of latitude and uh, longitude on a map. Okay, it's what most of the, the huh? It is, but it's, uh, that's a, uh, in the military, they use a 1 over 25 scale, okay? We will be using a 1 over 24. You can use the tools. Let me see. This is a military protractor, okay? It's got 1 over 25. Here's my protractor. It has all kinds of scales on there, okay? One thing this does not have, and I didn't know it when I bought it because I wasn't paying enough attention. And I got this from uh, Map Tools, if you want to write that down, because it doesn't have degrees on a map, so I can't shoot or I can't draw lines and everything else. That's okay. I'll steal one of those after the practical. Um, there are all kinds of places to get topographical maps. Um, there are other maps that you might want to buy, road maps, okay? Those are great. Even if you get a San Antonio road map, you think, well, I can't navigate with that. Yeah, you can. Checkpoints, those are checkpoints. Those are your, I used that term earlier. No, GPSs are wrong all the time. If you don't believe me, ask, uh, what was her name? Uh, the cook that was kidnapped in uh, Desert Shield, Desert Storm. Jessica, Jessica, was it Lynch? Lynch. Jessica Lynch, who, who's, uh, who's a uh, warrant officer of their motor division, decided that he was going to rely on a GPS instead of on a land map, got them sent into a... Uh, into an ambush, she was captured in, and, and repeatedly raped. The SEALs went in and took her back. Tell her that a GPS isn't wrong, is never wrong. GPSs are wrong all the time. Remember, and I'm going to tell you right now, the federal government controls those. If you trust the federal government with your life, enjoy it, okay? They can and they will and they have scrambled GPS just enough to make you off, just enough to screw you up. Chris. It's also really easy to take GPS and just get Google. Exactly. You just get a flipper and point it at it and you can do it. Yeah, I was thinking of the flipper, which what, 150 bucks? And boom, and it's done. You can fake you can fake all kinds of stuff. Yes, sir. Yes, it's got all the county roads and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, was it Rand McNally puts out a pretty good atlas that has the uh, that has the uh, county roads on it, the dirt roads, county roads. The map that you want, the best map is the map that you got in your hand. The best compass is the one I've got. If this is all I got, this is the best one there is. Okay? Now, would I prefer to go out with, mine somewhere around here, it's probably in back. Uh, would I prefer to go out with that? Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Would I prefer to go out with this? Oh, yeah. I'll go out with this, and I will stake my life on it. I will go out with this, and I have staked my life on it. I will go out with this, and I have staked my life on it. Okay? But... What I stake my life on may not be what's best for you to stake your life on, okay? Maps, you can get them all over the place. Stop at the, uh, when you enter a state, stop by their welcome center. Pick up a map. They're free most of the time because they want you to spend money in their state. They want you to stay in their state, okay? If you want a topographical map, usgs.gov, United States uh, Geological Society, okay? Now, when you go in there, look out, because they've got some maps that are from 
1923 datum. They've got some old ones. USGS, they're beginning to update from the uh, 1983 datum. Um, what are they going with? The 20, the 2000 new datum, 2020 datum, I think is what they're going with. Don't quote me on that, but they're beginning to update those old maps. The current map of the area, if you're talking about San Antonio, good luck because they're always building. But get a San Antonio uh, city map, a foldable accordion map. topographical map go on to, then go to US, USGS and I'm sorry Charlie yep the seven and a half minute map and you want a 1 over 24 okay the smaller the number after the one the bigger the scale is or the bigger the map will be the smaller area it will cover okay it's like the military uses 1 over 25s which is a 1 over 25,000 and a 1 over 100, which is a 1 over 100,000, okay? I, and we'll get into this next week, I can get a lot more accurate with my plotting with a 1 over 25 than I can with a 1 over 100, okay? Four times, Four times bigger, okay? You figure, uh, do I have 1 over 100? Okay, well, let's just look at this, okay? This whole rectangle here, is a 1 over 10,000, okay? What we will be using is a 1 over 24. You think I can get more accurate with the 1 over 10, the 1 over 24? Same thing with the 1 over 100, okay? Most of your 1 over 100s are gonna be your uh, brigade level and higher officers. Everything from the military translates into civilian when it comes to this, okay? Brigade level just means that you're talking colonels at and higher. Okay. Yeah, it shows a, a larger area, but smaller scale. Larger area, smaller scale. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the thing about it is, is one of the things that officers, uh, especially your, uh, your combat arm officers like to brag about is how big their map is. I was in a theater, you know that too, you're laughing. I was in a theater, and I'm not gonna tell you where, but I was in a theater, and I was a lowly uh, E3 PSD, and I had to connect 20 maps together and laminate them for a lieutenant. So then when I handed it to him, well, how am I supposed to carry this? That's not my problem, sir. I did what you told me to do. <laughs> That's your map. That's not mine. Well, I don't want a map this big. Cut them apart. Yeah. Yeah, you know, well, uh, either that or get some more maps. Well, these are the only maps that they're, that they're going to issue because they don't have any more in, the, in theater. Enjoy, enjoy that map, sir. <laughs> have a good day. Okay. Um, am I happy with a 8.5 by 11? Map. Yeah, it works. Unfortunately, Guadalupe State Park is at the convergence of four maps. This is one map, this is one map, this is one map, and this is one map. So if I want to get this on a seven and a half minute map, I would have to get all four maps that are joined. Yeah, that's what I that's what I said in email. They're four maps. So you know, does CalTOPO work? Yeah, you can join CalTOPO, print your own maps to, to scale, okay? You can absolutely do that, okay? CalTOPO is in California topo, to, topographical, caltopo.com. You can join them. I, you can get free maps. They're not, you can't do quite as much, but then if you pay your membership, you can get more details and everything else and get all kinds of stuff going with it. All trails. And you one. can search by the park that you bring in for a specific trail, and you can actually download for offline use with the library of Texas Trail Print Signal um, a wide variety of USGS maps and topographical maps um, for your park map that you can have offline. So if you don't have signal, if you're you know in a ridge line that 
Yeah. Jaya so does the same thing. Same thing. Now, if you want a paper map, you know, he's talking a digital, that's cool. You want a paper, USGS is the best place to go. Do a do a Google search. It's going to send you right back to US, USGS or any other map maker, cartographer in the U.S. You can go spend whatever money you want to spend. USGS is where they're getting all their all of their datum from. And, and datum is the map term for the information. I know it's properly data, what we're used to hearing. In a map, it's datum, D-A-T-U-M. Yeah, it's got to be totally different, right? So you're looking at, uh, they, they will get all of their datum from the USGS. And again, you can do whatever you want to with it. Uh, so I bought the, the entire US. Uh, Then it's the seven and half minutes. Today we started here. Okay? Blank sheet of paper. By the end of next next meeting, September 9th, we will be here. And I'll even I'm going out of frame. I'll show this to you because you're not going to remember it. I will teach